During this holiday season, give your loved ones a gift that keeps on giving for the rest of their life. Torpedo Pot is the only affordable self-growing flower pot that ensures your future food survival. All you do is add soil, seeds, and seedlings to the flower pot and watch your plants grow. Torpedo Pot can grow nutritious food in such abundance and variety that you can produce more food than your local farm. Visit www.torpedopot.com. The Euro crisis, double depreciations, occupy protests, and labor corruption scandals aside, it seems that capitalism is alive and well, at least in Africa. Africa is rising. Westerners are often told these days, after decades of economic ruin, civil war, and governmental mismanagement. Impressive economic growth statistics, the burgeoning African middle class, mushrooming mobile phones and internet use, these things are all proudly trumpeted, reminding the world of the capitalist way. But why all this good news now? The seemingly obvious answer is that Things are indeed improving in Africa, and the Western media now quite simply reporting what is happening. But to properly understand the African rising narrative, we also need to look at what their response to the much older dark continent narratives that have dominated Western sources on Africa for centuries. Tellingly, we can trace these negative narratives to the beginning of Western civilization itself. In histories, Herodotus, aka the father of history, relates to a cautionary tale about what happened in Africa. Five Nasomanians were off exploring southern Libya. After several days of wandering, they found some fruits on a tree and started helping themselves. Then, several men of small stature, all of them skilled in magic, seized and captured them, taking them for inscriptable and desertedly magic dwarf purposes. In this way, Herodotus suggested that Africa was not only different, but also was more threatening, sinister and dangerous than Greece. Subsequently, generations of European writers followed suit, substituting fantasy for fact in a markedly antagonistic way. Europeans created an image of Africa that was the perverse opposite of Europe's. Europe's general superiority would, by comparison with and in contrast to this image, be self-evident. Europeans' own idea of itself was thus predicted on its image of Africa and other so-called backward legions. From the 17th century onwards, debates over the slave trade, racism, and colonialism helped to crystallize these negative narratives in Western discourses. Abolitionists urged that Africa was a place of suffering because the slave trade provoked war, diseases, famine, and poverty. Anti-abolitionists said Africa was so forbidding as making slavery in foreign countries a positive escape. Either way, Africa was full of savagery and constant wars. The growing discourses on race added a further dimension to these debates supposedly explaining African backwardness and savagery as biologically predetermined characteristics. Social branches such as Herbert Spencer and Egwentists such as Francis Galton exerted enormous influence and lent credibility to generalize this xenophobia. Colonialism went further 
because of what they thought and thought they knew about Africa. A land of fantastical beasts and cannibals, slaves, backward races, and so on. The colonial powers managed to convince themselves that they were subjugating Africans and others for their own good. European violence was going to stop the war endemic to Africa and they enlightened over. Rule would be the benefit of all via Livingstone's idea of Christianity, civilization and commerce. The independence era of the late 1950s and 1960s saw more positive stories about Africa enter Western discourses. The archives of the British Panth contain several clips of the Queen visiting her former colonies. With this, one supposedly evidencing a bright future for countries like Sierra Leone and Ghana. But coverage of the Nigerian Civil War began a trend in Western reporting that has lasted to the present. The UK tabloid The Sun called secessionist Biafara the land of no hope, accompanying the piece with photos of the starving and the dead. It is not hard to trace a fairly straight line connecting headlines like this and contemporary reporting that roots and throws out clinches about the heart of darkness. But now, Africa is not only an emerging market, it is emerging continent again, but why? It is partly because some people think the best way to reproduce and reproduce the negative stereotypes of Africa is to pump out holy good news. An account on Twitter called African Good News is a case in point. It handles tweets that link to positive reportage of Africa, such as Angora may produce 1 million eggs a, a day and doing business in fast-growing Africa the European edition. It also a facet of a large rebranding project, which at least some observers may approve, seeing them as necessary corrective to the bioplate journalism mentioned above. Others are already finding them cringes and boring and downright misleading. A facile PR exercise designed to encourage mainly Western investors. We are seeing and we know all this. See the latest issue of Money Week if you wanted to be bombarded with statistics and given some ideas about where to put your dollars, pounds or euros. That there are resources and discourses between some of these writings and the 19th century imperialistic propaganda may be cause of another concern. It is important to stress that however you assess the African rising narratives related worth, it should not be disconnected because some of the statistics may be unreliable. We are seeing more and more African rising narratives because it is Africa and the change are not confined to economic growth. Large-scale political violence and wars has also declined sharply over the past decade. For example, things are indeed changing on the ground. So nonetheless, it is demand for the stuff underneath it, Africa's mineral and oil wealth, that is driving the economic growth behind all these narratives. The BRIC economic and China in particular have fueled a commodities boom that has benefited the states across the continent. Through questions remain over the actual extent and the qualities and equities of this boom. But perhaps the central reason we are seeing all in this is good news in Western media links and also takes us back to West's own idea of itself and of Africa. Africans are now finally playing by the West's rule the supposedly redemptive power of capitalism, coupled with the increasing adoption of liberal democracy in Africa, vindicates Western way. Moreover, feeling of decline in West's stubbornness 
low economic growth, the threat of social uphill, and the rise of China, and so on, have made all these Africa rising narratives all the more breathless. The economists, money weak, and the rest seem to see in Africa's rise hope for the Western's recovery. Africa rising then because the West needs it too. Africa is the continent of extremes, according to well-informed sources. And that is no way to be negotiated or in any way to be debated about. In the West, Africa is portrayed either as a heart of darkness, with Africans suffering from quartet of diseases, poverty, famine and war, or as rising phoenix, like the living of vibrant radiations of all those warring signs that perhaps capitalism, as it currently concluded, may not suit our increasingly globalized world. The Manichean's quality of these narratives is difficult to escape. The good trio of liberalism, democracy, and capitalism seems to be taking hold in Africa, but only if the West can help Africa defeat the bad trio of traditionalism and authoritarianism. And poor macroeconomic policies, these reproduce binary oppositions and signs of overly simplistic thinking infertilizing not only Africans, but also the Westerns who read about them. In response to these crude generalizations, there has been a growing chorus of voices calling for better reporting of Africa. More nouched, contextualized, and balanced reporting is not something anyone would disagree with. But this should not just apply to negative stories. Unconsciousized, simplified, and horror positive stories with only lead to further misunderstandings. Africa must and can only be understood on its own terms. Initiatives like Uganda Speaks and Global Voices and the BBC's recruitment of African reporters are a good start. The more Westerners learn about Africa from Africans, the better. But if they remain in minority, we will end up having another single story of Africa that is almost as misleading and distorted as the ones we have always had before. Hey, what do you think about this? My name is Osi the Bone Child, and I'll be waiting for your response in the comment section. Until next time, please continue subscribing to Africa Diaspora News Channel. And yeah, I love you so much. Take care, brothers and sisters. Living in America as a black person, you recognize there is one set of laws for you and one set of laws for those, especially in the white community. In our book, Passive Aggressive Racism in the System of White Supremacy, I take you through times in my life when I first started noticing white supremacy. We teach you how to recognize it, identify it, and also counter it in our book. This book is a beginner's course for those that are just starting to wake up and open their eyes to see the system of white supremacy. As a black American person, you must understand this system because this system is life or death to you. How you handle it, how you deal with it, it can affect your mental health if you don't understand this system. Pick up our book, Pass Aggressive Racism and the System of White Supremacy today on Amazon.